the Sentry 2.0. This is a small form factor console build. It's Dr. Zauber. It's made in Poland. You know, I thought it was pronounced Dr. Zaber at first, and I had this amazing idea. You ever see, you know, Rock Me Amadeus from Falco? It's like, that's a thing. I'm not really into music, but it's like, oh, yes. Instead of Rock Me Amadeus, it's Rock Me Dr. Zauber. I wonder how Google pronounces it. Copy paste to get the special characters. Dr. Zetomber. Dr. Zetomber. And then in English? Dr. Zaber. Huh. Come and rock me, Dr. Zaber. I'm sure that I still got that pronunciation wrong and things might seem a bit cramped today because uh, we are working in the land of many ITX and the Century 2.0. And I've done a lot of builds with the Century 2.0 so far and most of them using parts that you're never supposed to use. Things like a 14.63 millimeter tall, two and a half inch drive and an SGX power supply. Well, it's an SFX power supply, but it's a little larger. It's 125 millimeters on the side instead of 100 millimeters. So you can't use the attractive button. You got the 3D printed push button on draft mode. So I can I can print it in black later. It's fine. Red's, red's you know, it's, it's all good. I've done both the Intel and the AMD build. I've done uh, a build with 2070s. So we started with the MSI Twin Frozer 7. This, this guy's a little too big. To fit in this case so I've gone with a gigabyte wind force and the wind force i think is my final answer on video cards to fit in this for 2070 level performance now if you're looking for something not quite 2070 level performance well it's hard to go wrong with the rx 590 this is the phantom gaming rx 590 but it's pretty hard to go wrong with the rx 590 now Three motherboards tested in this thing. We've got the ASRock H370. That's an H series chipset, so no overclocking. But I ran the 8700 non-K and the 8600K. I mean, that's technically an overclockable part, but you can't really do much of anything except the whole multi-core enhancement thing. So it's not really as far as you could push that. And then also the Z370 with the six core. Now the six core is about it for heat dissipation in this thing. And that was one of the reasons that I used the Seasonic power supply was to get the 650 watt headroom. Knock to a nose presentation, don't they? I mean, they really do. It even comes with some thermal paste. Now, we've also got the option to try the NTH2, which is rated for minus 50 to 200 degrees C. So this is a little different. But with the VRM placement on this motherboard and the memory clearance, it actually does work pretty well for this setup. Now, I did pop the fan off of that heatsink. This is one of the Noctua high performance you know, static fans. Now, they did actually design the cooling holes to hide 120 millimeter mounting area for your fan. Only some of the holes perfectly line up but didn't bother me any. I just used two screws at opposite corners and this basically sits above the whole motherboard and it works fine for cooling. But depending on whether or not you can do this depends on your motherboard. Now under most loads, most normal scenarios, the Seasonic fan is not even gonna spin or, or do anything. And uh, the placement here means that hot air is gonna be exhausted out the bottom of the case, which is a little weird. Some people have 3D printed stuff to be able to handle that. Now on the AMD side, which I think is gonna be my final answer for this build, with the Gigabyte AB350. The motherboard layout for this works really well for this particular case. One, because the memory is moved all the way to one side. And if you're using a low profile cooler, 
like the Noctua L9i, uh, it only rotates one way on AM4. And so it's kind of like exhausting directly into the memory. I really wish you could mount it this way or they sold an AM4 mounting kit so that you could mount it this way because the fins running top to bottom would be a little better situation. Now it's time for this build to enter its final form. We've tested H310 and Z370. Now we've got B350. This is a Ryzen 7 2700, eight cores. And I think this is gonna be the final form for this particular build because I kind of want to do a Team Red build with something this complicated. Who knows, this might be my new home machine. The Gigabyte Wind Force is pretty much the graphics card to use in this chassis, in my opinion. All the way up through something even more ridiculous than the 2070, but I've had good luck with the 2070 so far. I'm not going to push it. Don't think I need anything more than that. So, I also like my 120 millimeter fan mod. I hope I get to keep that. Now this fits, but just barely. I mean, it's probably gonna pop the uh, top of the case off a little bit. You know, if this thing were just a couple of millimeters thicker, that would be an interesting solution. But it only happens to work because of my particular motherboard. See, the, the wireless part sticks up so high that I've got to clear, you know, the fan's got to clear that on this side. So this is really not, you know, the best situation, but we're gonna try this and see how it does from a cooling perspective. The Sentry 2.0, I mean, it's a second generation case. It's from a small company, Dr. Zauber. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. He said it's, I asked and he said it sort of sounds like ouch, but uh, you know, it's a, a lot of thought has gone into this case. There's a ton of options for reconfiguration and placement. Like you could even do 120 millimeter CPU, you know, cooler if you wanted to. Now I'm putting all of my points into GPU because this is gonna be for more gaming than compute. And especially with an AMD processor, it's not really gonna get that hot in the first place. It's not like the house fire, you know, Intel generation that we're dealing with at this point. So I think on the Intel side, six score is probably the limit, but on the AMD side, the 2700 is what I ended up with. And that was basically fine with this fan configuration. But their manual, Dr. Zalber's manual on the website is quite good in terms of like, okay, here's a list of parts. We've tested these. We know these parts don't work. So if you're thinking about doing a build, go play with it on the website. It's not just the manual. You can also like interact with it and it'll show you how much room you have. So I've, uh, I've used a power supply that I don't recommend, but it does actually work. Even though I had to, you know, solder my own surface mount button and then make a 3D printed cover for it. It actually comes with a really attractive sort of arcade style push button. And this really does look like a console. It looks like a really nice system. The other thing is it has an optional stand. So if you wanna use the stand, which I would highly recommend because it seems like the cooling is better uh, in my own you know, informal testing of three systems, uh, use the stand. But if you don't wanna use the stand, it comes with little rubber feet that pop into holes on the bottom and you can totally use that in sort of a horizontal position. Just make sure it can breathe because the graphics card is gonna draw air in from the bottom and exhaust it out the side. And the motherboard, depending on how you've got the fan, may exhaust air out the side or the top. Now I've configured my Noctua to actually exhaust air out the side. So it's gonna pull air in from wherever it can and uh, push it out, out the side. That seemed to work better for me. I don't think an eight core, either the 9700K or the 9900K in the system is really the best idea. In fact, Dr. Zauber recommends a 65 watt CPU, but I had pretty good luck pushing that. I mean, you know, 95 watts, 2700 with a little bit of an overclock, the, uh, you know, the 8700 running at stock speeds 4.3, no throttling, lots of ADA 64 burn-in testing, and if it'll pass ADA 64, it's gonna pass real-world gaming. So you can really tell that a lot of thought and engineering went into this. Now, I've done reviews of other small form factor cases, like the Encase M1, and if you're doing like custom loop cooling or something like that, I mean, the Encase M1 might be pretty cool, and you can do like the whole 240 thing, but I think this is a more practical case. If you're willing to deal with, you know, a smaller GPU, you can actually mount a 120 millimeter, you know, all in one closed loop system here, and there's enough room to route your cables back over to your CPU. So if you did want to run a 9900K or a 9700K with something like one of the small form factor 1060, 1070s, I'm sure there's going to be 2080 variants if they're not already out, then you could do that. You're just not going to have as much room for your graphics card. So keep that in mind. 
If you decide to pick up the Century 2.0, it arrives in a nice attractive box. It comes with lots of foam and lots of proper packing and you know, prominently on the outside of the box is, hey, go check out the manual. It is really well packed. It comes with a USB 3 header, tons of mounting screws, tons of options. You get a right angle PCI Express bracket. You've got a security Torx bit screwdriver that it comes with and a bunch of Torx security screws that are a nice black finish so that you can build your whole system using Torx security screws if you want. It also comes with a bunch of silver Phillips screws, that's what I used to mount the motherboard. But all in all, exceptionally well packed and put together. It is nice packaging. It'll definitely endure worldwide shipping wherever it happens to be going to. And probably on the outside of the box is made in Poland. And uh, big thanks to Dr. Zalber for sending it over. He sent it over, no strings attached. It was just like, hey, uh, entrepreneurial DIY thing. Do you want to take a look at this case? And so I've been doing lots of off-label things, like technically there's only enough room for a 9.5 millimeter, two and a half inch drive, but if you're willing to mount it upside down with some double stick tape, you can totally put it, you know, in the top. And you get a little bit of a bulge in the top, but hey, it fits and works fine. Now that's not an officially sanctioned use or anything like that, but this is a four terabyte mechanical hard drive that I can use with like an M.2. And also because I've used the oversized power supply for this particular build, there's not enough room for that second M.2, but my final AMD build is gonna have this EVGA 550 watt SFX power supply. Uh, and that is 100 millimeters on this side. So I'll have enough room for the standard arcade button and all that, no problem. Nicely done. This giant mess on my workbench is uh, about 500 permutations of building in this Century 2.0. It's a really impressive case for small form factor. If you want the absolute top end performance, uh, you're gonna need a bigger case. You're gonna need a bigger boat. But for a six score, didn't bottleneck the 2070, the performance is great. Overall, really impressive product. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums.